Hi, everybody, and welcome to another installment of Migo Museum's Vintage Migo. This week, I thought we'd look at another Migo catalog, but something a little more rare in the form of the 1980 Spring Supplement. These are much tougher to find than the dealer catalogs themselves, which were distributed for a whole year. They had a very short window of time, and their purpose was to highlight some of the special things that Migo was working on to get buyers interested. And oftentimes, you got some very early looks at product lines, and I really enjoy that. And the 1980 is no exception. It's some really interesting stuff. Some of it made it, some of it didn't. So I thought I'd do the usual, do a little slideshow, and then talk about some of the more interesting and unique things in this catalog. So let's take a look. The catalog opens with the newest in the Micronaut series, and as you can see, they are doubling down on the fantasy figures that were so successful in 79. Uh, this year we have Kronos, Lobros, and Centaurus, each with gorgeous Ken Kelly artwork on those cards. I still need a card of the Lobros. Uh, they are very early prototypes. They are not on the cards themselves yet. We also have a ad for Ampzilla and Sharkos, Sadly, did not get mass release in the United States. There is some conjecture that the, some of them did get to the United States, but they mainly were sold in Canada. The catalog then segues into Migo's big sci-fi blockbuster for 1980, which was Disney's The Black Hole. We have the 12-inch figures all tooled up and ready to go. That's not really a big surprise. All they had to do was the heads. But as we look at the 3 and 3 quarter inch range... You can see that it's only the first wave of figures and that Bob, Humanoid, and Star from the second wave have not been featured. They would ultimately not get a U.S. release. Star Trek The Motion Picture was Mego's biggest and brightest hope for 1980, and that was based on the incredible sales of the Star Trek TV line, which Mego canceled at the request of Paramount because they wanted to focus on the motion picture itself. They have the 12-inch range already set up, although the Klingon is in what I would consider a prototype suit. That's probably due to the tooling of his armor. The wrist communicators would actually see release. And the 3 and 3 quarter inch range, those are definitely hand-painted samples of the original prototypes. You can really see uh, the differences from the production figures. Also, the aliens are not pictured, just photographs of them. Now, I'm not certain if it was Mego or Paramount who mixed up some of the names of the aliens, but I do know the Regellian is supposed to be the Saurian. That's a little bit of Star Trek alien trivia to impress the ladies with. We don't talk about fashion candy all that much at the Mego Museum. We're not fashion dolls. We're more into the action figure lines, but... It should be worth noting that this was actually a big success for Mego and sold very well in the 1980s. Web Spinning Spider-Man was the big launch for 1980, and I truly believe it was this figure's development that got the magnetic 12-inch Spider-Man cancelled from the year previous. In the photo, you can see that Spider-Man has flesh hands. He's clearly a prototype. It's a very innovative idea, and I've often been wondering if, if you had this as a kid, did it work really well? It looks like it does in the commercial, but that doesn't tell me anything. Finally, I wanted to touch on the Elastic Heroes, uh, something that I collected, and it totally broke my heart. Migo in 1980 created the most logical Elastic Hero they could in the form of Plastic Man, who was riding high on his Ruby Spears Saturday morning TV show on ABC. I was a big fan of that as a kid. Also, they created Mickey and Donald. Um, that is our most popular 
uh, video on our YouTube channel, the commercial for that. I have no idea why, but it brings hundreds of comments every week to this day. Migo is also proposing, as we can see here, uh, stretch Snoopy, Charlie Brown, and Woodstock. Woodstock does not look happy about being stretched. These never came out. Finally, Space Attack is Migo's 1980s move into handheld games, which would be more and more prevalent for the company. Unfortunately, the handheld game market would implode in the early 1980s, and it would hurt a lot of companies, including Migo. Uh, and this was a very deep cut for them. I'll get into this more later. Our third issue of Toy Ventures magazine is now available for purchase. If you are a Mego fan, there is a lot to look forward to in this issue, including a full, complete guide to the Space 1999 series and an in-depth look by Chris Franklin at the sources for the world's greatest superheroes packaging art. There are other great articles in there about Lincoln Monsters, Japanese Evil Knievel, and Action Man. Links for more information are in our description. Thanks for looking. That is our look at the 1980 Mego Spring Catalog. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to know your feedback and what one toy, if you could have it out of this catalog, you would choose. Let me know in the comments below or hit me up in Migomania, our Facebook group, or at the forums at MigoMuseum.com. Thanks for watching. If you're new to this, I hope you'll consider hitting like and subscribe. This is what we do every week. Until next time, be well and talk toys, not others. Cheers.